Nigerian inflation rate falls by 0.37% in seven straight months, according to a report by Consumer Price Index. CPI says that the prices of goods and services which rose by 15.99% in October is 1.7% higher than the rate recorded in October 2020, 14.23%. And we will be reviewing the newspapers on Off the Press this morning with our guests. And with that, we'll say good morning and thanks for joining us. It's a Tuesday morning here on Plus TV Africa. Welcome to The Breakfast. I am Osao Gi Agbom. And I am Messi Boko. As usual, it's good to have you join us. All right, uh, as always, we kick off with top trending stories. This morning, it's... Uh, it, all the stories on Top Trending are a little sad, but of course we'll go through them, um, share with you the major discussions that have happened across the country in the last 24 hours. Uh, the first one here, we will start in Lagos State, where of course the uh, Lagos State uh, panel of inquiry that was set up you know, after the end SARS protest, eventually put out his report yesterday and has some very, very, well for some people, shocking, damning, you know, stunning revelations and findings. Uh, for for some people, you know, but for me personally, um, there's nothing that, that is shocking. You know, it's just a couple of things that I might say, oh, I didn't know it was this bad. Um, or I didn't know that this, you know, thing, you know, happened. Um, so some of the, you know, the important details with regards to all of that, the, the, the um, report basically um, shares every single thing that was found, you know, through cross-examination of the army of the NSAS protesters and everybody concerned, including, you know, doctors and, and um, you know, um, medical personnel, everybody, you know, that they could interview. Um, and their findings really, you know, tell a very, very, very sad story. I like the fact that they eventually got uh, to a point where they said that, yes, it is an actual massacre that happened on the 20th of October 2020. Um, and it also details, you know, the fact that as much as 96 people were killed in, uh, during the NSAS protests here in Lagos. And um, unfortunately, they couldn't verify exactly how many of them were at the Lekki Toge. The, the um, report does, you know, point out about 11 people that were killed at the Lekki Toge, but it records about 96 deaths that were, that were recorded um, for the, here in Lagos during the NSAS protests. Um, it also goes on to say um, that um, there was a couple of, of bodies, I also read for that in the report, that shows about 20 bodies that were unidentified that I don't even think are part of the 96 that they are mentioning now. 20, 20 plus bodies that were dumped at mortuaries, uh, dumped at, at general hospitals that were not identified till date. They really have, um, you know, tags. That is, so that is one of the things that I noticed, that these per persons, these Nigerians, these lives were lost and they ended up as tags. They, they are called NSAS Yaba slash... 25 and says lucky slash 32 those are how they end you know that that's how they ended up it's a really 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 sad sad um story and, and just it also says you know one of the things that have been asked is you know who ordered uh, for the military to be invited to lagos and it says over over there in the report that is the lagos state governor who had invited who invited um the soldiers to the lucky toll gates says also that the soldiers did fire live ammunition. They came back the next morning with, with trucks filled with brushes to clean up blood. Um, also says that police, after the army had done you know, the damage that they had done, the police went on and continued shooting into a crowd of protests. It's, it's such a messy, messy, hurtful report. Very, very messy. And then just like I, I mentioned, you know, off um, camera, that... It is really an emotional, it's quite emotional because, I mean, there's no way you expect me to talk about this and, and not feel very pained and not feel that I should, um, you know, show some emotions, really, because I'm human. And it could be anyone, it, it, could, it could be anyone. I will still say this, we have lost humanity across the entire, you know, if you look at the world entirely, it's a problem. There's a problem of the fact that we don't understand. And that's why uh, sometimes you look at my bio on social media. I put up first that I'm a human being. I'm human first. And you need to understand that before I am any other thing, before you begin to put tags to me, I am a human being. And in dealing with me, you need to understand that. It, it, it's really, really sad. But let's stay with the Nigerians, um, you know, uh, Nigeria right now and as a country. And the fact that we do have, we don't have respect for human life. 
No. The fact that, you know, those who should protect us are the ones taking advantage of us and are the ones killing us. Now, I am totally disappointed, and I will say this anywhere and any time, that it's really, really sad that over time you have the fact that the government have denied and they are still denying that nothing has happened. And I must commend, you know, the uh, judicial panel here in Lagos State. They have done a very great job. And this already, as a person, gives me a lot of hope. And I'm sure that this also gives, you know, a lot of people hope. Because usually with Nigeria, we, 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 you, you know, I'm sure you get to hear the conversation that, oh, it's Nigeria. You understand? So even if they set up a panel of inquiry and all, oh, we're now in Nigeria now, nothing is going to happen. Really, really, just to say that, uh, it shows that there's, there's hope. They are still remnant, and I respect every person that was part of that team. And we're only hoping that, and I know that posterity would actually speak, it would ask. I, I wonder how those who were involved in this massacre, those who, invo who were involved in this particular act, do, how do they even sleep? Not just those who you, were you know, involved, because I'm sure that these police who, officers, who, who you, they, they the have cover. kids. You know, so it, it's, it's really disappointing once again for the Nigerian government. It's totally embarrassing. Yeah. And, and, and you, you could also remember the, the back and forth we had, you know, CNN being engaged and then Lai Mohammed saying all sorts. Uh, oh, we have to sue them. Oh, this is not. Nothing really happened. And DJ Switch, you know, being dragged back and forth. Yeah. Now we have all of that evidence put out together. And, and I, I, like, I like the, you know, well, in the last, you know, six to eight hours, you know, the silence from... All those who were part of the cover-up, all those who were part of, you know, the voices that went ahead with the narrative that nobody was killed at the at the toll gate, and and I, you know, like you said, we've lost humanity because I, I really cannot imagine what will make a person take that stand, seeing the evidence that was already glaring, and that's why I said I wasn't shocked with this because I already I saw, you know, that these things actually did happen, but I'm not a forensic expert, so it was left for the panel to put out these findings. Um, but there were people, there were human beings that said, oh, no, these things, they're all lies, you know, and that, um, that somebody even said that it was a CGI uh, uh, cre um, 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 created video that DJ oh, really? put out there. It's, it's madness, complete madness. I'm going to share some of the things that it says for those who haven't seen the report. It says the evidence before the panel shows that the Nigerian army left the Nigerian, um, or, or rather after the Nigerian army left, the Nigerian police force follow up, followed up with the killing of protesters, shooting directly at fleeing protesters into the shanties and the uh, lagoon at the Lekki Phase 1 foreshore, close to the Lekki Toll Gate, floating corpses um, and shot one close uh, to a person called Sarah Ibrahim. Um, it goes further to talk about the arms used by the police when they eventually, or during the panel, they denied that they were even at the toll gate, that they even showed up, that they even left their police station. All those things eventually were found to be false. Um, I, I see someone here also responding, saying that the finding that at the Lagos Enters panel at Damlin is established. The fact that the army, led by Lieutenant Colonel Bello, was at the Lekki toll gate on the night of the massacre. The panel finds that live rounds were shot directly at protesters, resulting in mass casualties. There were 96 deaths during the NSAS protests in Lagos, deaths which resulted from army and police actions. There were many injuries and deaths at the Lekki toll gate. In effect, the number of death, um, of death are unknown. Um, it goes on to say, and this is some of the other things that you will find very, very shocking. Um, I hope I can quickly find it, where it says that they came back the next morning with trucks and filled with brushes to clean up blood and clean up whatever evidence that was left um, there at the Lekki toll gate. Yes, it says um, um, it, it was alleged that and corroborated that the soldiers had their vans packed at the Lekki toll gate and removed as many bodies and corpses of the fallen protesters which they took away with their vans. One of the protesters who was shot and taken for dead, Olale Konsanusi, who eventually escaped to narrate his ordeal ex experience, um, stated that 11 corpses were in the van when he, where he was placed and, and presumed dead. It's such a, it's such a mess. It's a big mess. It's, it's so much of a mess. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm practically struggling to look for words, you know, to describe, you know, what it is right now. But what do you expect after this report has been put out? Uh, what do you really well, there, expect? There are also recommendations, you know, um, at the tail end of the report um, that I didn't bother reading. Um, there's a part where it says that the toll gate should be named, the ends has a toll gate, uh, and some other things that I'm going to have to go further. 
I mean, I think it's 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 it's, it's a lot more. There's the recommended punishment for soldiers, dismissal for the for the army officers and for the police and some of all of that. I, I'm not um, saying that you know all of this recommendation. I mean, we're talking about the fact that we have laws. We also have a problem for a government who is still in denial of the fact that yes, nothing really happened. No one died. Uh, soldiers were not there. The police, uh, you didn't have police presence around. What do you expect? Yeah. Do you think that uh, because don't forget, we're going to get a response. I'm predicting this yes, exactly. that the government will come out. Lai Mohammed is going to come out soon and he's going to tell us another tale of how, you know, those who are against this government, who are against the, uh, you know, the APC government, uh, those who are really, really, really fighting against the Buhari's administration. And I constantly say this, this every other time, that Nigeria is bigger than a political party. Everything is not about President Muhammad Buhari or the APC or a particular region. Lives have actually been lost. And I'm, I'm hoping that in a sane society, even prior to this ordered time, uh, but of course, it's it's a conspiracy, it's a collaboration yeah. that these persons probably wouldn't have been uh, wouldn't have acted on their own. Let's even go back to the beginning of you know how we got to where we are. I mean, what led to all of this? The fact that people are protesting in a democratic society. I mean, protest has been used as a, as a tool across the entire world. It feels like right now Nigerians are just embracing protest. It is not today people that are protesting in oh. different countries. What are they protesting for? If you also look at it, everyone has a right to association. Everyone has a right to a peaceful assembly these persons were not i saw videos of people singing the national anthem and you know uh, putting out the flag and that could be so emotional and then you had people in uniform who were acting as if they don't have human feelings shooting innocent people I, I, and I hope that the internet, you know, whenever I mention the international community, I know you look at me in a particular way. But, you know, if we constantly, if the international community constantly says we're looking for, you know, global prosperity and preaching all of that. It is high time if, uh, you know, the system in itself, Nigeria cannot save itself. It's high time, you know, that the international community steps into this because it's a human oh, right I mean, violation. Lives know. have been killed. I, Lives have been I, lost. I, I, and all I of would that. also just mention, because we need to move on to talk about Itunu Babalola. Um, I would also just mention that when Chris Nge is shocked that doctors are leaving Nigeria and wants them to work here for, for nine years before they leave, this is the reason why doctors are leaving Nigeria and this is the reason why Nigerians are leaving Nigeria because of um, it, it, situations like this. I will let you know, the government, of course, go ahead and respond to the NSAR's uh, findings or the panel findings, or the panel's report rather, and hear what they have to say. Um, if they will uh, go ahead and you know, discredit this uh, report or not. Um, it was alleged and corroborated that soldiers picked bullet shells on the 9th of October 20. Policemen followed up in the morning of October 21st to pick up bullet shells. Several unidentified bodies were removed by security agencies and Lagos State Environmental Health Monitoring Unit deposited at various hospital mortuaries in Lagos. Three trucks with brushes underneath were brought to the Lekito Gate in the morning of October 21st to clean up the scene of blood stains and other evidence. The Lagos State Governor, um, in his CNN interview, said that there was no blood when they went there, Inspector Fash came up a couple of days later and found the camera. Uh, Bola Metinubu said that, you know, what were they doing there? The president said that these were young people that were trying to remove him from government. Oh, really? It's a shame. All right. We'll move away from there and share another reason why a lot of Nigerians don't feel um, like they have any reason to associate themselves with Nigeria because, once again, the value of the Nigerian life and the value of a Nigerian person to the Nigerian state has continued. We've continued to see reasons why, uh, the, you know, reasons basically showing that the Nigerian state doesn't care about the Nigerian person. Um, yesterday we spoke, or oh, I, you know, uh, shared a story um, off air um, about a, a, a man who was um, in prison, an American, I, I hope I can find his name, who was in prison in Myanmar, was sentenced to jail in Myanmar. Um, um, he was eventually released yesterday, of course, after the American government stepped in. Um, and, you know, whatever, you know, diplomatic, you know, means were necessary, got him out of America. He was, you know, going to be sent back to the, uh, got him out of, out of Myanmar, he was going to be sent back to the U.S. That is how a government that values the life of a citizen wherever they are, even in Antarctica, even in hellfire, they would go and do whatever they can to ensure that they save that life. But that's not the same thing for the Nigerian who might be dealing with one challenge or the other in a different country. Itunu Babalola is a girl uh, from uh, Ibadan, I believe, or your state, who um, was doing business in Cote d'Ivoire for a while. Um, she promised her mom that she was going to be visiting Nigeria every, you know, quarterly and, you know, spending some time. Sometime in 2019, she made that same visit, came back to Nigeria to visit her mom. By the time she returned, she found out that her apartment had been burgled in Cote d'Ivoire. 
um, the person who, of course, um, you know, broke into her apartment and stole her valuables was arrested. Turned out to be a 14-year-old boy. Um, he was arrested. She decided, of course, to take it, uh, make a police case out of it. Um, unfortunately for her, um, the DPO, according to her statement in the letter that she wrote to Femi Guadabi Amila, the DPO in the station there claimed that he was an uncle to the little boy, the 14-year-old boy, and he didn't want the boy to go to jail or to, you know, have his record tainted. And he offered to pay off, you know, um, Itunu, some of the money that uh, she claimed to have lost when the um, her, her house was burgled. Um, she complained that the money that he was offering was too little. And, of course, he continued to find ways to bully her into dropping the case. Um, eventually, a couple of days later, she was arrested along with her sister and her sister's husband, her sister's boyfriend. Um, they spent three months in jail. She was accused of, um, of um, uh, using a, a little girl then in Côte d'Ivoire um, uh, for prostitution. So that's you know, the first accusation. Um, she eventually was, of course, arrested and spent you know, months in jail. Uh, she sought, you know, legal assistance that didn't really do much, you know, uh, uh, difference. She eventually made a mistake by naming herself Becky Paul, you know, um, during the court case. And from there, Itunu was eventually given a 20-year jail t uh, sentence in Côte d'Ivoire for a crime that she had absolutely no knowledge about. She continued to reach out to the Nigerian government, reach out to the, you know, for, to Femi Bajabamila, reach out to NITCOM, reach out to the Nigerians and Diaspora Commission and everybody possible. And that includes also persons that um, include David Hundeng, who stepped in and continued to pursue, pursue this case, reach out to NITCOM multiple times, Abike Dabiri and many other people um, who, of course, have been quoted in this story. Um, but eventually, Itunu died 24 hours ago in a Côte d'Ivoire um, um, uh, prison. Um, reports say that she died from the complications of diabetes, diabetic coma, um, and that's the end of her story. But this is another very, 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 and I, I can say very a billion times, hurtful story of how a Nigerian couldn't get help from the Nigerian government or from the Nigerian you know, state when they needed the assistance the most. It feels, and the way that this story is told, it feels like she was completely abandoned by the Nigerian state of course. and um, eventually lost her life in Cote d'Ivoire. You know, th there's some other part of the story where I read where, you know, when, it, when she was arrested because it felt like you burgled my house and then they're turning it down on you because the person involved is a person of interest, apparently. So you, you still have the police brutality uh, across board. And this, we're talking about a West African country. And most times, as much as I like not to stereotype Africa as it is, but I think that we have a big problem. Not that this is not happening in different parts of the world, I mean, in Asia and what have you. But my point is, you see Africa, West Africa again, and then when they had the, oh, she's a Nigerian. No, oh, she's a Nigerian. She's going to die and rot here. It's not going to be yeah, justice. I saw that part of the story. And, and, and so, so you, you still find out that the issue of police brutality is not just limited to Nigeria. It cuts across board. And let's even stay with our continent, Africa, West Africa. And that's it. I don't really understand that justice has been suppressed because everyone has a right to a fair hearing. I mean, there's no way something happens that you hear from just one side and jump into conclusion without hearing from the other side of the divide. So, so the fact that she was actually denied I, fair hearing, because that's also another part of the story. She was denied fair hearing. And as much as they, they could, they tried to ensure that, you know, she wasn't given that opportunity and looked up for everything to ensure that she was implicated, probably because she's a Nigerian. And of course, here I mean, we are. I, I get that part, you know, of of, of you know, um, unfair trials across. It, it, this happens across the world. That's it, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm saying that as much as you know, it's not limited to the the African space or the Nigerian space as what's going on. Yeah. But let's even stay with us that you know this is also happening in another African country. I mean, very very close by. Absolutely, in the but same I, think, I think the biggest point in this story is not you know the fact that. Um, you know, there is unfairness, you know, in the legal justice system across, you know, in many parts of Africa. It is, what is the giant of Africa doing about its citizens and the life of its citizens in different countries across the world? What diplomatic power does Nigeria have, you know, with a country like Cote d'Ivoire? Um, someone here, um, Ayo, that, uh, Dr. Ayo Shogunro says, Cote d'Ivoire is a small West African country that Nigeria can easily engage diplomatically, yet our government failed when it happens in Europe, Asia, or, Af or African um, sub-regions uh, where Nigeria has no, um, yet our government failed rather, it says, what then happens in Europe, Asia, or other African sub-regions where Nigeria has no influence? What is the value of the Nigerian life anywhere? 
um, Demola Olarunwaju says here, understand that every failure of government kills the fire of patriotism in citizens, one candle at a time. Itunu Babalola didn't just die alone. Her death has snuffed out the light of, of hope in those who dare to believe that maybe just this time Nigeria will turn up differently. I, I totally agree with you. I'm, I'm not saying that that's not you know a big one here, but I'm also also saying that as much as that's the issue, uh, the fact that right now you hear the Nigerian government saying we're going to set up a panel to investigate. Yeah. I mean, this is like medicine after death, like it would be said out there, right? So um, when she was alive, we couldn't come through for her. Now that she's dead, we're going to you know flex our muscles. It just shows you, it brings us back to the beginning of our conversation that there's no value. There's, we don't, we, we've lost humanity. Our leaders don't even understand. Me, I'm thinking that, you know, for everybody that's going to be contesting for election, let's, let's begin to ask people valid questions. We need to understand why we, we're government, why we want to represent the people. Security is very important. Protection of the lives and properties of the people. That is your primary responsibility. Whether they are in Nigeria or outside Nigeria, it should be your concern. And as much as we're good at, you know, imbibing and copying and borrowing, you know, culture and practices from other countries, why can we imbibe how other countries treat their citizens? It's really, really sad. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that we don't have a repetition of this, but of course, I can't even guarantee, I can't say that that's not going to happen because trust me, we're going to have a repeat of this same issue yeah. and nothing is really going to happen. We're, we're going to have a longer conversation on Itunu Babalola's case uh, sometime this week and expand further as to what exactly happened and what played out. It's a really, really, really sad story um, that broke my heart in a thousand pieces yesterday. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're moving to Off the Press, where we have a review of the major stories making headlines across Nigeria this Tuesday morning. Stay with us.